Hello everyone, it is Monday, July 3rd. Markets open again, so we're here. Um, we have a profit target today uh, on our top step of going to tell you what our profit target is. We're going to be trading the NASDAQ. We have a profit target of $159,000. That's $1,836. Uh, it's 91 NASDAQ points on one contract, and that is uh, 30.6 points on three contracts. So, yeah, we're, we're looking for eighteen hundred and thirty six dollars today to get funded I've uh, been watching ICT stuff on his uh, breakers so low high lower low A to B run standard deviation projections um, ideally you want to see that and I just watched his video so I'm not gonna say that I'm like fully there but we're looking like for example I'm gonna give you an example of a bearish breaker so we have a high low higher high and this is our A to B run and then you can see that um, price targeted liquidity okay Take it from point A to point B, and then you can see that it reached exactly three standard deviations. Um, you know that I'm always looking for standard deviation projections. So it exactly reached three standard deviations from point A to point B. We have a high, a low, and then a higher high. That is a bearish breaker. And then taking from point A to point B, we confirm to see if there are liquidity targets down here, any other sort of um, any other confluence that would suggest that price would would want to come down and here we see our liquidity targets so with that in mind you know that is what we're working on here and we're working so we're working on our bearish breakers so here looks like we're not quite there yet we have a low we have a high but it's not uh, a higher high so we would like to see ideally you know, I would like to see okay. we have a low, we have a high, we have a lower low, so we pushed it's just barely swept into liquidity here. Point A to point B. And then two standard deviations, just above two standard deviations, uh, would take us just about above liquidity. So I don't think that I'm you know fully there yet with the breakers but uh, once the spread comes down a little bit we're probably going to try and get long so want to get long here There we have a Bissy there. We have a bullish order block. And we're just at the midpoint of that. So we're going to get long one if we can get the spread. Okay, we're long one. And we're going to aim for two standard deviations from this breaker. And so the aim is going to be there. Okay, so that's going to be our aim up here. So we have a bullish order block here, and we had a breaker block below that took us up just above one standard deviations. It was running on this liquidity, uh, but I didn't quite get there. So I think we're going to work our way up to two standard deviations higher from this. Um, from this bullish order block here 
So we have a low, we have a high, we have a lower low. That is a um, bullish breaker, it should be. And then we have liquidity targets. Two standard deviations gets us almost to a liquidity target. And three standard deviations gets us well above that liquidity target. About two and a half would get us there. So we're now looking for PD raise to get long. And seeing if we see in the marketplace that would, you know, we've got this bullish order block here on which we got long. This is also should be um, an inverted uh, bissy. Okay, so pretty, pretty, you know, decent signs here that it should be an inverted bissy. Price did trade below it. Um, we'll see. Standard deviation projections, if they are in confluence with other uh, targets, should should be a big factor. Right, just like that. Okay. So, we're live in a recording. Um, I've had people again ask me if I want to do live streaming and uh, unfortunately I think that what you're going to do is you're going to copy trade me. I'm not interested in you copy trading me. Uh, required SEC, CFTC and legal disclaimers. So let's get through that. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Trading involves substantial risk including more than you initially invest. Leverage trade may work against you. It also may work for you. Uh, simulated trading is not real trading. It may not uh, represent live market conditions, including periods of illiquidity in the market. Do not trade more than you can afford to lose. Legal disclaimer. I am not your attorney. I do not represent you. I don't want to represent you. This is not a solicitation for legal services. So, um, with that out of the way, um, So I'm expecting that any move down here should be bought up at some point. We should go run on this buy side liquidity. Uh, buy side liquidity is up here. That is our New York AM buy side liquidity and we should um, start a running on it here uh, fairly soon. It's going to be the consequent encroachment of that wick there. I'm not super confident on entering on that. I'm, I'm going to leave this at one contract and I need to do some quick math. Um, i got to be very calculated with this today. I can't make too much money as I am uh, yeah, can't make too much money. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous to you, but it's true. Cannot. Okay, this would this one contract would get us uh, 
enough there for now. So it's probably just going to be one contract. I'll tell you why I'm saying what I'm saying. Um, trying to uh, use our breaker block standard deviation projections for runs on liquidity. So we can see that we have a low, we have a high, we have a lower low that pushed. So one of the things that he mentioned in, in the video today was that you want to see the breaker blocks break and sweep into some liquidity or run on liquidity. Right, so low, high, lower, low, that sweeps us barely into some liquidity here on Monday's uh, AM session trading. So with that in mind, we could see that if we take those standard deviations, about two standard deviations takes us to a run on uh, opposing liquidity, that's buy side. And then three standard deviations takes us well above buy side. So we're probably looking at like a two and a half standard deviation run. Um, the other, you know, there's two ways that ICT has taught standard deviations, and that's from uh, advanced gap theory and advanced breaker block theory now. So, I, again, I'm going to repeat that. Um, if you are a standard deviation lover like I am, uh, standard deviations are just wow. Um, there's two theories that ICT primarily, okay, that I'm aware of, has taught for standard deviations. Uh, he's taught one before, and that's advanced gap theory. So that's using breaker block, measuring block. Or sorry, not breaker block. You're using the, the measuring gap after a breakaway gap. So you're using the low or the high to measuring gap, which should be the midway point of the move, and then using standard deviations to see if those standard deviations get you to... Um, if that gets you to a liquidity target or if that gets you to um, a higher time frame inefficiency, both of which could be a draw on uh, liquidity. The second standard deviation model that he is now taught after okay, the time is Monday, July 3rd, 2023, is advanced breaker block theory. So using our low to our high to our lower low, that should be a valid breaker block. And then we take point A to point B and that should give us a standard deviation projection. It does. It gives us one, two, three. Now you can see that price ran uh, above the one, the, the first standard deviation. Uh, we closed above that, but we left unfinished business higher. We didn't run on that liquidity. So I am of the opinion here that uh, in the next few hours or whatever, probably going to come and run out these. Uh, probably going to at least come and run out these highs um, just using some of those other concepts together we know that price is drawn to liquidity especially in these like holiday hours prices probably just going to bounce around liquidity pools so uh, I have pretty strong pretty strong inclination that price should want to come and run these highs Yeah, not a signal service, guys. I'm focusing on myself, my own trading. This YouTube channel is a video recording. It's uh, journaling. It's my video journaling. It's not a signal service for you. It's not. There's a lot that I think that you can learn from me. Ultimately, you have to learn it from Michael, our inner circle trader got to give credit where it is due. I have a big ass Red Bull. I got the big one. So looking for price to at least come up above our first high here and then I'm gonna aim for for two standard deviations from this breaker and that would take us near our New York AM high, and I think that price is going to want to going to want to make a run on that. Okay, using our uh, breaker block standard deviation, we had a really attractive one here. I mean, this was like a textbook breaker. 
that was A to B there. Okay. Now notice that one standard deviation was hit and it came exactly to two standard deviations, which was also redelivering this BISI, redelivering into this balanced price range and running on short-term liquidity. So you're probably wondering, like, what is the magic voodoo here? And it's we pushed into buy side liquidity and we went and attacked opposing liquidity. Uh, you know, and that's exactly what Price did here. How did you confirm using multiple of Michael's models that we were that we were going to do that? Well, we had a high, a low, a higher high that pushed into liquidity. You want to see that a push into liquidity, that second push into liquidity. So we have push into liquidity to number one, a fake move down, a second push into liquidity, or another sweep of liquidity. And then at that point, price goes and targets opposing liquidity exactly two standard deviations lower. So that's what we saw there. It's very beautiful stuff, really. Okay, regular trading hours. You can see um, had this regular, we had the new week opening gap here that was a draw eventually on liquidity. So, yeah. Uh, that being said, I'm going to be very conservative today with the trading as uh, I don't want to blow it. So, uh, if I have to scale into this position, that's fine. I'm not going to scale in unless uh, I'm on a PD array of some kind. So, the next PD array that we're looking at. would be down here at 41 evens. That's going to be the midpoint here of our uh, yeah, bullet sorter block there. It came with an inefficiency. So next PD array. Uh, I will get long at 41 evens if we get it plus I'll uh, say one tick spread. So how about that? Do I think that we get that? No. Just in case price wants to make its way down here. Sometime here in our holiday trading overnight session, the basic framework is that I think we're going to run on this buy side liquidity. Uh, we've already rebalanced, redelivered the new week opening gap. We got this breaker block suggesting two standard deviations higher. We have liquidity there. Uh, that's some confluence that price should want to. Um, That's exactly where it went. Two standard deviations lower. How about that? Ran on that liquidity, which confirmed exactly new week opening gap. That's insane. I mean, that's really insanity. Never seen anything like that in my life. That's wild. Sometimes it's, sometimes the confluence, wow. This guy's not lying. Holy moly. Y'all aren't seeing what I'm saying. It's just unbelievable. It's truly unbelievable. I mean that. This is groundbreaking stuff. It's financial freedom. It's the opportunity. You don't you don't see what I just saw. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try and spell it out for you. Tonight Michael taught to use breaker blocks, advanced breaker block theory. 
I'll teach you advanced breaker block theory. I can't teach it to you. you got to go watch Michael. But look at this, right? We have a, a bearish breaker. We have a high. We have a low. Well, it's not really there on the high, low. It's not a higher high. It's not really a breaker, huh? Okay, never mind. Gonna ignore that. Yeah, that's not a breaker. That is the breaker. That's high, low, higher, high, pushing the liquidity. This is not. This is, could be other things, but that's not a breaker. That's a high, a low, and a high. To be a breaker, would need to come above. This, on the other hand, is a breaker. So, should come up and run the spy side liquidity. Now, why am I adding on another contract to come down to our two minute time frame? That is the midpoint here of our order block, order block for contract number two um, plus a one tick spread. So if price is going to come into this order block, I think that would be a reasonable place to add on contract two. Now, because my profit target today is $1,836, I don't particularly want to push this too hard. Two contracts is probably going to be enough. And then see, you know, see how the trade starts playing out. So, hope that you all are doing well. Um, this is, let's say again, this is Monday, July 3rd. We are just after resettlement. So this is going to be my resettlement to Asia video. We're looking at a very slow market, obviously, holiday holiday tomorrow. So we're looking at a very slow market. Uh, and what we are focusing on now is we are focusing on standard deviation projections using advanced breaker block theory. And that is high, sorry, low, high, lower, low that pushes should push into liquidity. Our A to B projection here should be our standard deviation projection. That takes us to that negative two projection. Now, what should the standard deviation projection also uh, line up with? It should line up with a liquidity or an efficiency target. Lo and behold, we have buy side liquidity up here on the NASDAQ. So that would be in confirmation of what our uh, bullish breaker confirmed to us. Now, we did deliver above the one standard deviation here of the bullish breaker. With that being said, uh, I think we're going to come up, we're going to deliver two standard deviations, and that will take us just above these highs here. So uh, I'm pretty confident that the market in the next few hours should rise. But... Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to give you that. I'll let you know if I see any market conditions change. It's going to be a very slow video. I doubt this video will retain its viewership for more than a few minutes. Uh, I am I, again want to repeat that that I actually want to do this for a living, and I'm not really interested in giving you signals. I want to be the best, and I I, I got this guy on my comment section asking me if I do live streams. And I think the reason that he's asking that is because he wants a signal service, and I don't want to do that. I, I know that if I live stream, I'm going to have people try and copy trade me. And I don't want you copy trading me. you got to put in the work your fucking self, unless you're paying me. And then we can talk. Okay, But you're not getting it for free. And I think that for, the li you know, for my people that would watch a live stream, I think a lot of you would start trying to copy trade me. And that's an issue. That's an issue to me. All right, you're kind of stealing my work, uh, and you're not paying me for it. Now, if you start, you know, you're like, you know, you do want to pay me for it. We'll talk. Okay, we'll talk. But you got to give me a serious offer. The twenty bucks ain't gonna do it. Uh, I do not trade forex, uh, so don't ask. I don't. But I can analyze a forex price chart if you really want me to. Yeah, I'm looking for these, these, you know, working on our 
We have a high, we have a low, we have a higher high. That should be a breaker. And then point A is going to be a bearish breaker block. Point A. It's almost exactly one standard deviation plus spread and into our low sort of and it almost predicted the new week opening gap. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy, man. This is crazy. Sometimes this stuff is just crazy. It's crazy. It's groundbreaking. I mean, it's really, y'all don't know what you're missing here. You still think he's a con artist or something. Uh, y'all are, you know, it is what it is. I guess uh, I'll make all the money myself. <laughs> you do what you want. I believe it. I'll show it with my bank account soon. All right? I believe it. I mean, guys, what do you think that the market works off of? Like, silly nonsense? It works off standard deviations and mathematics. It really shouldn't be uh, groundbreaking to you. We get a little bit of food here, so um, camera's going off. This is my journey into professional day trading. My vehicle to do that is Top Step Trader. It is a uh, prop firm. I'm working on becoming an affiliate with Top Step if they will take me. I don't know whether they will take me or not. I'm reading Top Steps Affiliate Contract.
Yeah, this is probably going to be a fairly boring one. You're probably going to see a lot of nothing. See what the price is doing. I am working. Uh, I'll try and show this to the camera. I'm working on ICT's uh, breakers, uh, breaker blocks. Advanced breaker theory, standard deviation projections. All right, we're long two. And this is all we're going to add on for right now. Okay. So that is it. How long this trade takes. Uh, I, I added on that contract there because that contract came on there as that is our bullish breaker, sorry, uh, bullish order block here. And came on right there. Is that is that was the midpoint of our bullish order block? It's going a little bit further down than I'd like to see it, obviously.
let's see how we're doing here. I'm sorry, I've been looking at something else. Did, you know, it did drop a little bit further than what I wanted to see. Come down to this black candle. Come down to these wick inefficiencies. Don't really... I'd like to ideally see this busy stay open. Okay. I'd like to see this busy remain open. But we could get one tick into this busy here and then trade higher. These are all the contracts that I am going to put on. I'm not going to uh, put on further contracts.
Okay, guys, I'm now a. Uh, gonna check this. Um, I'm sure that no one is just watching me sitting here silently, but I am now a top step partner. So there's that. are failing to close Okay. Take the fair value gap. Well, I don't know how long this trade's going to take. Um, probably a long time. Um, I don't know how long I just want the runtime of this video to, to be up. Uh, I mean, y'all are watching live trading. Uh, live as it can be. But it's a holiday weekend, or it's a holiday tomorrow, so, you know. But I want to show y'all a little, you know, I want to talk about this. My objective with this channel is to show you the good, the bad, the ugly. So this is kind of the boring. And I want to show you that too. You know, this is my video journal into um, professional day trading. And sometimes it looks like this. I, you know, I can't make the market go any faster. We cannot do that. Um, I think, you know, came in, almost filled in this here Bissy. Might come down to 333. That's probably what we're doing. Uh, and then up. I think that we're going to end up running this buy side. Uh, but for risk management reasons, for showing you responsible trading, these are all the contracts that I'm going to put on, just two. Uh, guys, it's all mathematics, you know, this whole thing. It's all mathematics. And my profit target here today is $1,836. These two contracts would get me $1,500 there if I could hit the target. 
So I, there's no need for me to add on another contract. There's really not. I want to limit my downside risk because I don't want to blow this account. Um, and I'm fairly confident that we are going to come up and run this second standard deviation and come up to this volume imbalance again and come and run some of this buy side. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking, guys. Now, we might come down first and then do that, which would be unfortunate. You know, I'm thinking we might come back down to this 333 and then up, which would be unfortunate. But, yeah, ultimately, that's the target. Guys, I'm now a uh, Top Step Trader affiliate. Proud to say that. Proud of that. Why not? Why would I not? I mean, why not, guys? Why not be proud of it? Working my way up to and it's just uh, income. income. Guys, the whole name of this game is income. That's it. And uh, one day, maybe I'll sell a course. First, I have to demonstrate that I can actually trade. But why not parlay that into a course? Or would I not want to do that? Uh, and I like, you know, talking Inefic about the markets, anyways. Really, inefficient. Is that uh, guys uh, I am now contractually uh, I'm now contractually a... bound not to disparage top step I wasn't disparaging them anyways but now I'm contractually bound not to so wrap your head around that one uh, I'll have to start adding in the uh, paid promotion thing use my top step affiliate
All right, guys. See how the market's not developing. Yeah, the runtime of this video. Mm. Hey guys, we're trading a step two combine, 150K. I just call uh, want to call say quickly hello uh, imbalance so yesterday I made 3600 fake dollars and so getting closer to the objective I also um, do you know what uh, an affiliate is or affiliate marketing Are you familiar with that um, this company that I'm trying to trade for uh, I am also going to try and generate some income through uh, being their affiliate. It's the best company in the industry. Uh, they're based out of the Chicago Board of Trade Building. They have an agreement with the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. It's the most legitimate company to do this on the market. So it's the only one that I'd want to do that for. Um, it's it's this is kind of a long term sort of uh, plan, as you know. You know, I don't really have any sort of real influence yet it's got the small channel going but um, it can be a little something something in addition to uh, trading uh, so basically people click on my link uh, go and buy the product and then I get a commission it's like a sales commission Uh, it's it's the simulated trading in order to in order to become a uh, their prop firm trader. So it's exactly it's it's linking people to the exact same thing that I'm doing. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not the going to be any sort of real money, but it. Uh, it could be a little bit of extra pocket change over time. Well, I I know that this is what I'm called to do. I I I I uh, I'm I'm looking right now at a Nasdaq that it's obviously holiday trading, and this thing is not moving at all. <laughs> but here, I, but let me tell you something. Last night, when the market was doing a whole lot of nothing, I made 3,600 fake dollars. And that was when the market was doing nothing. You know, actually, I've, it's, I've generally done better when the market is moving in two directions. I think I just have a sort of, a sort of reticent belief still that the market should not go too far, which, which is really a, like a false belief. Like, as you know, this is, this is all just numbers, right? There's nothing, nothing more intrinsic to it. It's just mathematics. And so I've been learning a lot of mathematical concepts, um, math, math, mathematical models, 
and they, they work really well. And that's really what day trading is, is it's a lot of math. It's a lot of, it's just a lot of math, risk to reward, um, timing, models. It's a lot of mathematics. So I've been studying, do you know what a standard deviation is? It's, um, right, so if I go from, uh, yeah, so let's say that I go from the number two to the number four. That was a one standard deviation move. Does that make sense? Because you're doubling it. So two standard deviation move would be from two to six. So one of the ways that you measure your targets, uh, kind of your what you're aiming for in the market, is you take prior price data. All of this is kind of forecasting, forecasting what the market. We, we, I don't work in the in the land of certainty. I work in the I work in the land of probabilities. So it's. Um, it's kind of like if the market has gone this far, if it has made move from point A to point B, then looking out in the future, projecting that same, let's say that it's already moved 10 points, then a one standard deviation move from that would be another 10 points, and a two standard deviation move would be 20 more points. And so that's kind of the basic framework of how you would go from using a using one model to get an entry and then looking looking with other things like I think the market you should go one standard deviation or it should go two standard deviations from where it currently is so it's just math and it's taken me a long time to you know all the stuff I think I've told you this before everything that you thought about the markets, about what everybody is taught, uh, it's all wrong. It's just mathematics. It's That's it. It has nothing to do with the economy at all. It has nothing to do with fundamental nothing. And uh, when you're able to separate yourself from those kind of ideas and you start just purely applying the mathematics, it's doable. You know, we've been through how difficult this is, but uh, it is doable. So, you know, I'm pretty close right now to uh, getting the opportunity to get to the, get to the next step. I'm only 1,800 fake, fake dollars away. Uh, I don't know if I get there tonight or not. I have to take things pretty slowly because I'm kind of tired of blowing out accounts. So I take it on. I take them on like one contract at a time take it very slowly now try and play the try and, try and play the long game and I've actually never it's so funny is that since I started applying risk management and trying to take things slowly I've never been more profitable faster uh, that sounds like a contradiction less is more it's true though um uh, I thought they'd be like four cars deep today, but it's pretty empty in here. It's like one car, one car deep in the beach, and there's like not that many people in the pool, so it's pretty empty. Yeah, pretty empty. I I don't know, maintenance man, uh, who's still going around out here in the 95 degree heat. He's 68 years old, and he's still going around. Uh, not Victor, but. The other guy, I, I don't know his name is. It's not Victor, though. We have a Victor here. It might be a different Victor, but we have a Victor. I think it's the same Victor, though, because I'm pretty sure that was the same guy. So, uh, do what? Oh no, there's been fireworks. I don't know if they're supposed to do that on the beach or not, but... I guess so. I don't know. Um, do, you, do you remember how I told you that I thought the, that these markets are computer automated? 
yeah, algorithmic, like driven, you know, driven by computers, right? That that it's not it's not real, in in the sense that you think it is. I, no, the future's gold and silver does not. No. Um, actually, uh, you know, I tried trading gold a few times. It is one of the most manipulated along with silver and copper it is one of the most manipulated markets that you will find on a chart it yeah I mean from a fundamental basis I'm looking at silver futures right now at 23 spot one dollars uh, silver silver on a fundamental basis shouldn't be at 23 dollars that's nutty I mean so it's had to it it's 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 having to separate yourself when you're trying to trade futures from and you know what I've actually did you know that like uh, the SEC the CFTC when you start you know, most people don't actually you know since I'm an attorney I actually read the contracts and the disclosures right like because I like contracts did you know that they actually tell you that that if you start reading the CFTC and SEC stuff, they'll outright tell you that the markets have no, nothing to do with what you think they do? They actually say that. No, they do. In their disclosures, they're like, this is not supply and demand. And that well, and and here's the thing, right? For the longest time, I was so influenced by what people had been claiming around on Wiley Trading and and uh, all that classic stuff, right, from like the 1970s, and I thought that that, you know, I had no reason to believe it. And then I started, you know, really delving into it, and lo and behold, I watched a video from the chair of the SEC from over a year ago, and he was on an interview at Fox Business with, I think, Trish Reagan. And she, she asked him, uh, Do you, have you ever heard of something called payment for order flow? or selling order flow okay you know that when okay you know that right now I'm trading a simulated account right it's not a real brokerage account so but when I was trading my real brokerage account before I blew that but when I I still have it but there's not a lot of money in it so I just don't touch it because I don't want them to close it um, when you put in your order that that is called uh, order flow and about 90 percent of that does not get like routed against one another in the way that you think that a market should work it actually is sold to a third party which is why only about five to ten percent of the orders actually have any imp any impact on price and so this is the big con game that has been going on for a long time now and it's driven by a company called citadel i think you know ken griffin citadel and I specifically, you know, I have no reason to believe this, but I think it is. I, I think it's Citadel's trading algorithms that drive all the futures markets. It has nothing to do with the orders. And people, they'll still teach you that when you put in a, a buy order that you're actually, you know, taking out a part of the book. And you're not. And that's how they, that's how, that's how they do it. And it can be learned. Like their algorithms kind of work in a predictable manner. But yeah, this is not the 1930s. I'm, t I'm just telling you, these aren't. This is not 1935. You know, prior prior to computerized markets and electronic markets, you go back in the 30s and 40s, and the 1870s. A, a natural market is a boom and bust cycle, right? It's a very uncomfortable boom and bust cycle. And when's the last time that you saw the S&P 500 down five percent on a limit down day? Yes. And and uh, and well, the last time that we saw a limit down day, I think, was probably the virus, right? So, but you know, I just once you once you start to see. Once you start to see the computers, the, the algorithm in, in action, it doesn't mean that I'm winning every trade. I don't want you to think that I'm not winning every trade. But I'm, 
Yeah, about 70%. But any, anyways, so where I'm at right now, I think I've told you my long-term plan, and it's a very simple one, right? Work for this company, um, get, get ad revenue, and then with this sales commissions, basically, it's, it's basically sales commission. And it's a company that I believe in. Like I, I really do believe in it. I think that they're they're doing things right, basically, because I've looked at other companies and they're kind of like casinos, and I don't trust them at all. So, anyways, uh, and then you know, once I'm there, ideally I don't want to trade for this company, right? I want to trade my own money. Once I have the skill and the talent to do that, we've talked about the capital and the talent and the confidence to actually trade my own futures account, you know that that is the objective, right? Not to trade for someone else. But I have to do that right now. And so uh, step one is get get the first paycheck. Step two is save up a little bit of money. Step three, start trading my own trade station account again and, and get that going. And and uh, build up this sort of YouTube channel, this media that I'm building, trying to get some sales commissions going. And then, uh, and then you know it's interest-bearing bonds and CDs. So are you, are you going to have more rights to your YouTube account? Can you take it with you when you leave that room? Or are they owned? Oh, no, no, no. I'm an independent contractor. I own it. Um, the only agreement that I have with them, I read the contract, is a non-disparagement agreement, meaning that I can't, I can't earn a sales commission and at the same time disparage them, which I wasn't going to disparage them anyways. I read the full contract. So it's just a sales commission based on an independent contractor. So it's probably not going to be that much money, realistically. You I mean, you really need to have a lot of people following you before you make any sort of sales commissions. But it's it was another op- a cheap option for me to get into. Didn't cost me any money to get into it, and so why would I not do that? So I've told you kind of my three-step business plan here, and uh, that's kind of what I'm trying to execute on. And the only thing that's changed from yesterday is I'm closer today than I was yesterday. So... Um, that's basically that's basically all the update that I have, and then and then that's 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 pretty much it. Uh, now the first time that that this company, if I can make it to what they call a payout, or I just call it a paycheck, but a, a payout, uh, they give you a they give you a bonus, and my bonus should be about six hundred dollars or maybe four fifty, so that would be good. So that I'm really trying to trying to trying to play it safe and and use a lot of tight risk management and then get there to that that first payout bonus because you know it's in my interest to do that and uh, and then you know ultimately the objective with this company it's a multi-stage process right now I'm still in the evaluation phase and then the next phase is I think I've told you this before another simulated account that that you can make 50% on and then after that, then they sign you up as a professional, and I have to sign a bunch of contracts, you know, to be a professional trader with them. And then that that no, 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 it's all electronic. No, no, I just have to basically uh, I have to sign a contract stating that I'm going to be a professional uh, trader, so trading their their funds. No, they don't make you get a securities license. Um, it's a little bit of a, in my opinion, a gray area on the on the regulatory scene that I wouldn't have to get a securities license to do it. Uh, I don't think that that is a settled a settled area of of regulatory law yet. But you you know that ultimately, if I have to go get a uh, securities license, you know I'll just do it. It's not so if I have to take another test and get my securities license. I'll, uh, that'd be fine. That's, you know, um, I don't think that that is coming down the road.
for uh, a couple of years because it's not yet not until I I, I have to go through a multi-step evaluation process to get there so we're probably looking at one to two months of consistent risk management and consistent returns and then they do give you a live brokerage account at which point you are actually trading their money does that make sense so uh, until I'm there the answer is no but that doesn't mean I can't make money on these simulated accounts it just uh, it you know it just means I'm it I'm going to just tell you a little bit about the business model is like basically if you are a profitable and successful day trader you're getting paid by all the people that are unsuccessful with the company does that does that make sense that's so it's a it's a dog eat dog industry I mean you, I never knew this before I got into this this is probably the most shark infested industry I've ever seen and it's and it's all computerized and it will play mind games with you I promise you you've never seen anything like it it will play absolute full tomfoolery on you if you don't know what you're looking for and so uh, I wish that I would have known that you know going into it but I had to learn it the hard way and now I'm under no illusions like these these markets are not designed I've talked about this before but these markets are designed to bring mom and pop and and insurance companies 5% a year and Goldman Sachs boys 10% a year that's what they're designed to do they're not designed for you to to make an income day trading it can be done but there's a reason why it's a 90 90 90 industry so that's why you have to sign 30,000 disclosures before you can get up into a brokerage account right because they know so none of that is to tell you that it can't be done but it takes an immense amount of dedication and work and treating it like a career and, and all that stuff. Uh, but I'm going to tell you this on the upside is that I know for a fact, like a hard mathematical fact, that if I can become a real professional doing this, I will be way wealthier than I would be as an attorney. I'm just telling you, it's not even close. The amount of, the amount of money you can make trading, if you're good at it and you're skilled and you're patient and, and all those things, it's, I'm just telling you, it's not even close. It's like not even within the realm of the universe. It's, it's, uh, so I'm not saying that I'm there yet, obviously, but I've seen, I've ran the numbers. You know what my per diem or my daily rate was before. Uh, it's all simulated trading right now, but I'm just telling you that it, that it's, it's like a factor of five right now. And that's on small accounts and small leverage and, and all those things and and so it can be done what do you mean no I have um, it's an automated system so like it it uh, it's just a it's just a uh, automated system that follows my trading and that's it just automated now I do have this company does uh, I think they have about 70 employees and they're based out of the Chicago Board of Trade building in uh, in Chicago. Now the CEO lives in Aspen, Colorado, but he was a professional futures trader prior to the electronic market, so he actually worked in the pits before they went away. And uh, But he lives in Aspen, Colorado now. And um, he was a... Uh, I think he said like he ran a... I don't know. It was something crazy, like a vending machine company before he got into futures trading. Like it was something way different. Like he he was running his own company, and it was like way w not what you would think. It was like selling vending machines or something. Because I I listened to his his uh, an interview of his, and uh, he's an interesting guy. Uh, so their company is about I think seventy to eighty employees. A fairly small company, but. Um, this is the company that's been doing it um, for the longest. So this is the first company to offer a prop firm model to the public. And they've been doing it now, I think, since like 2010 or something. So it's the most reputable one in the industry. There's one out of Austin that's really popular right now, but I don't, I don't trust it. And so I stopped trying to use it. 
Um, I think that the sort of regulation that's going to come on these companies in the future is uh, basically like if you want to trade for them, you'll have to get a securities license, which you know, if that regulation comes and they're like, you can't, you can't trade this company without a securities license, you know, I'll just get a securities license. I'll just do it. So that's not, that's not an issue. Um, you know, their business model is a little bit like uh, taking advantage of, I mean, it's, it's a most like, you know that 90% of people that try this are going to lose everything. So in a manner of speaking, they're kind of doing people a favor because it's cheaper than going and blowing their own money in their own brokerage account, right? So uh, it's a difficult model to get into. You know, nobody in their right mind is actually going to let you trade their capital unless you've shown risk management and consistent returns. And so they kind of make you think that, that like you're going to, I mean, this is just kind of the advertising, like, you know, that you're, you're actually going to get to risk their capital right away, which is not really true. It's not like false advertising, but it's not exactly true that, that they're actually giving you capital until, you, you know, it's up to their discretion when you actually get a, they sign you up for a live brokerage account and you do become a professional. Uh, and you know, it is possible, it is doable, but the vast majority of people who try this model are, are going to give up and fail before they ever get there. So I don't really fault the company for that though. I mean, if, if I were running a prop firm doing something like this, ain't no way I would give any of these people I see online, any of my money, like no way. So I totally understand why they kind of make it difficult before you actually get real capital to trade with. I totally understand that. So, all right. Um, I don't know if it's going to be today. You know, the market is on a holiday today. And so it's really kind of moving like molasses right now. So how's the, how's the, uh, how's the devil situation? Okay. Well, hey, by the way, I'm kind of a math wizard now. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, all right then. Yeah, I went for a, another multi. Uh, I went. I walked all the way up to the Valero, all the way up and all the way back. So, I think I'm down a few pounds, and I'm I'm super brown. I mean, I'm brown, brown. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Damn, this market wants to do nothing. Um, they're 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 very common. So it's just a separation between candle one and candle three. You take it, for example, your first candle here, the high to the open of the third candle. Three candles, there's... Fair value.
fair value gap. All right, let's see what the market is doing. Um, not a lot. Not a lot, amigo. Coming into Asia. All right, I'm actually going to stop the video there because, well, not quite there. Let the video get to an hour and a half of runtime. Um, I'm going to start up the. This is going to be resettlement to Asia. I'm going to give you a recap of why I'm long too. Um, So, yeah, so here was our breaker block. Um, this was a low, a high, a slightly lower low. Take the swing from A to B here. Standard deviation projection should give us a liquidity target. We came up to the midpoint of this order block. That was one standard deviation. We, we uh, traded above that, so we traded up to the top of this order block, into this rejection block. Um, two standard deviations is going to take us into this buy side liquidity up here. So we should be uh, pretty comfortable there with two standard deviations higher. It's 383 spot 50, 383 halves. And we could make it all the way up to three standard deviations here, and that would be 408, uh, 408 halves. I don't know if we get to three standard deviations. That would seem a bit unlikely to me, but, you know, definitely doable. I think the price is going to draw up to this buy side liquidity first. Um, I think it's just starting its ramp up right now. Uh, entry models used. Show that. Okay. Uh, entry number one was on a wick inefficiency here, the kind of the midway point of that, or the consequent encroachment of this wick inefficiency there. And then also we have this bullish order block, so I entered on the midway point of that. You can see that we have been holding a bit of drawdown as price starts, it should start spooling higher uh, in the near future. That's kind of what I'm guessing is going to happen. We're going to get a spool higher, uh, but maybe it's going to make me, you know, prove me wrong on that. We're not adding on any more risk tonight, guys, because uh, profit target. So, kind of limited by our profit target here on uh, today for today's trading, Tuesday, July 4th trading. We're limited to a profit target of 1836 spot 44 that will take us to express funded it's going to take us up to XFA express funded account um, so bullish order block here inverted wick draw on liquidity using our bearish sorry our bullish order block standard deviation to confirm uh, draw on liquidity should be higher up to these highs in my opinion uh, we have fully redelivered and rebalanced and worked up down and all around this new week opening gap so, in my opinion, we're probably looking to spool higher here at some point. Um, that is what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm going to leave the runtime, let the runtime go here to one hour and 30 minutes. Uh, give myself a little bit of a break and then start up Asian session. Uh, see how this trade works out. So, we used uh, advanced breaker blocks with standard deviation projections to get us up into buy side liquidity. We used as an entry model the midway point here of this order block and the midway point consequent encroachment of this uh, wick inefficiency. So all that being said, I think that looking to the downside, looking at kind of moving against us, there is a BISI here. The price is not re-delivered into this BISI, so could be looking at some downside movement and then draw back up into, into buy side liquidity it would be kind of my thinking. That is possible. Ideally, I'd like to see this busy stay open, but uh, I don't know if we actually get that. So, with that, bye bye. Oh, I'm now a Top Step affiliate. Use that link.